Everybody, it's Tyler here at Sugar Rest Signature Event, checking with 7405R Milburn Riptide. Team 98 in true skill, by the way, so far, an event win as well, two under their belts, and looking absolutely phenomenal here at Sugar Rush. Watson, last match, you got a lot of cool things going. Really effective blocker, by the way, when I saw the last match as it goes through, but a lot of other cool things that go into this robot uh, coming in, of course, from some programming functions, the overall robustness of this build, and we'll be doing a full dive of this robot coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Thrill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Alex, let's start off on this robot showcasing your drive. Talk to me about your motor comp and what's all gone into it. Yeah, so we have a six motor drive. You can see they're all aligned, all uh, next to each other. We did this for spacing reasons. Additionally, we have this piss or this uh, tank right here. Um, the or we uh, decided to go with 2.75 inch wheels. We went through a lot of iterations, but found this was the most effectful, uh, effectful um, uh, because. Uh, not only were we able to get over the barrier much uh, more easily, but we could also balance on the barrier in between the two middle motor uh, wheels. Uh, you can also see our sleds right in the front. We, uh, our past competition, we had a sled and funnel design, but we had a bunch of problems with accidentally and taking too many tri balls. Uh, so we decided to go with the, the two sleds that you see now. And this, we felt, really helps uh, our driver allow, uh, and allows him to go over the barrier and hang very, very well. Uh, last thing is you can see the 60, 48 tooth gears um, that we have on the corners. This is so that we can uh, drive kind of into the wall and still be able to you know, ride along it and not get stuck in all the little uh, extrusions. Yeah, watching your match, it just seems like you're able to negotiate the field so well, so glad to see that that's working out for you and the iterations that go into that. Next, we're going to be talking about the uh, four bar and the uh, uh, catapult mechanism as well. So, Sean, talk to me more about what's gone into that. And, uh, you know, from a four bar wise, uh, one of the things uh, I've seen with your team is that it just seems like that the overall way that everything's moving just seems really smooth uh, with that. So, just talking about uh, how you designed that and any changes you made too. Sure, so on our original bot, we actually just had a catapult design, and we saw that at our uh, first couple of comps, we were like, we're not able to shoot over a couple blockers. So for our next iteration of our robot, we decided to go with a, um, a four bar design. Uh, so this is our four bar. So we decided to not go with uh, parallel channels here. Uh, some other four bars that I've built in the past had uh, parallel channels, and the problem with that is that the channel that connects the four bars are not, uh, is gonna be also per uh, perpendicular to the ground. But if you really want to shoot it over these really tall blockers that we're seeing at competitions, you want that little bit of an angle. So this, uh, this uh, geometry that we came up with for our 4-bar really, really helps. Um, connected to our 4-bar, we, we power our 4-bar by these two pistons right in the, in the center of our bot. Uh, we, we actually use pressure regulators on the outsides as well, uh, when on the way down, because uh, there's, also, there's a lot of weight on the 4-bar that pushes it down. So we, we realized we don't really need that much air to like activate the 4-bar down. But on the way up, uh, it, because uh, the inverse relationship, it's going to be very heavy. We decided uh, we're going to add also bands, uh, triangle bending techniques on our 4-bar that allow us to kind of raise the 4-bar much easier. Um, we, we also have a, um, we still have a, a kicker here. So we went through a couple iterations with this kicker as well. Uh, originally, we had like a, um, uh, a flex wheel here. We had a channel here, a screw here. None of these really worked. So we decided to go uh, with this like rubber stopper thing, uh, connected to a standoff. Um, we also experimented with like how tall or how um, uh, like sh short we wanted to touch the tri ball, and we realized that hitting it dead center was like perfect. Um, we also experimented with like how we can get like a lower arc or a higher arc depending on the height of a blocker that's been coming up to us. So we realized that if we just place the tri ball like normally in the in the crevice that we made here, it just gets, it gets like a really good arc. But if we place it inside right here, then it gets like a really high arc and even shoot over some of our sister team's blockers that we've tested. Um, and generally our kicker shoots 100 shots per minute and we run it at 42 RPM. One of the things I was going to ask you on there that you kind of answer is how are you seen against other blockers? So what I'll ask you instead is that uh, looking from skills uh, over to uh, match loads and that sort of thing, are you adjusting at all like your height from where you're firing from or anything like that? Yeah, so we realized that our grouping and our spread and skills is so much more consistent when our uh, 
four bars all the way down. And uh, when we place our trial balls uh, normally, it just like it groups right in front of the goal. And we actually have our driver in our prog skills dry box as well. Because let's say you have a little bit of air in our skills. Let's say the trial balls are ending a little bit left or a little bit right. He actually calls out like, okay, uh, Ishan, Faust, um, just shoot a little bit to the left, shoot a little bit to the right. We can actually adjust our tribal placement mid match loading so that we can um, shoot uh, in, a, in like more uh, precise grouping area. That makes a lot of sense, Sean. I appreciate you going through all that. Uh, like I said, watching your rebound on the field, absolutely phenomenal for that. So it's cool to see the iterations you've gone through for that as well, too. Uh, Joey, let's pass it off to you. Talk more about, uh, I know on your bot, uh, the wings uh, that you have. And then we mentioned the blocker earlier. Uh, I love versatility that you got a really tall robot for your lift, but double purpose with that as well, too. Yeah, so I'll start with the blocker. It's mounted off of these screw joints connected to our four bar. That way we can also use the height that the four bar gives us as part of our blocker. And uh, basically, this piston here, once it retracts, it pulls these L channels closer towards it, um, bringing this further up. And while this also happens, uh, we have our second stage of our blocker mounted on these screw joints here. So basically, when this moves up, this string here because is not taut at the start. But once it reaches, as it gets further away, it becomes taut and eventually locks it in place at around this angle. Now, obviously, we could uh, make this a bit taller. However, we value um, the ability to like hang over other teams' uh, match loading systems rather than just having it, you know, straight up like this. How tall are you uh, uh, when it's angles? With so. our overhang right yeah. now, we're actually at around 45 inches. Okay, that's pretty darn tall. Yeah. Uh, anyways, with that too, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so now, I guess I'll also transition to our wings. Uh, we have vertical wings here that are mounted on hinges. Uh, basically, these pistons near the center of our bot, uh, they push out and they are stopped uh, at around 90 degrees by this hinge. And we actually put these this bracing here because we uh, noticed that if you drill the high strength axles, I guess poorly, um, they do bend because of the amount of force that you're like hitting the uh, the barriers with. So that's why we put that there. Let's pass over you to talk about uh, your intake. Talk to me more about it. Right here we have an intake powered by one blue cart motor, uh, one to one ratio, so running at 600 RPM. And initially we kind of went with different iterations of these uh, flex wheels. So initially we had uh, rubber bands connected with sprockets and then we went in with um, on, on top of the rubber band we had on top of the rubber band we had mesh. And what this did was it allowed us to um, it allowed us to intake the, uh, intake the balls better. But what happened is that through scrims we realized that the mesh actually got us entangled with other robots far more frequently. So our final transition was to these flex wheels and these flex wheels, um, they're mu they prevent uh, entanglement a lot more, and they actually grip the tri ball a lot better. And for our sleds here, we have intake sleds that are cut out of two pieces of Delrin, and they are connected through the standoff just so that they don't wiggle around and you know uh, break. Overall, this robot, I just want to say, absolutely phenomenal machine uh, that you've done for that. I love to hear about the iterations you've gone through, uh, and as well from your bot. It's something that I hope you guys are really proud of because it's just been such a great machine. So thank you so much for telling us about it. 7405R Riptide, uh, Milburn Riptide, and good luck here, of course, at the Sugar Rush event. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.